So in order to uh, create more complex programs, we're going to want to control the flow of the program. One way to achieve this is by using if conditionals. And we can create very complex applications just by using conditionals. Um, so we'll take a look at the if, uh, else if, and else operators uh, in, in use with, with if statements. So here on line two and line three, I've created two variables and I've loaded them with, uh, with the data, as you can see, Lewis, CK, and Wanda Sykes. Let me go ahead and add a little space here. And I just want to check and see if they're equal. So we need to use the if keyword whenever we have um, a condition. Opening and closing parentheses, and that's going to be where our condition goes, is uh, in, this, uh, in this argument for the if uh, operator. And then we'll have the opening curly bracket and a closing curly bracket. So what this means is that we'll check on a condition here on line five. We have to write that condition in there between the opening and closing uh, parenthesis. And then if it's true, it will uh, perform the operation between the opening and closing curly bracket. So let me just check and see if comedy, uh, I have to spell that correctly, comedy one equals comedy two. And if it does, then I'll just write alert. They are the same comedians. And we'll close that out. Now, when we test this, we won't actually get a result because they aren't the same as we can see. So what will happen is that it will come here on line five, uh, compare these. Uh, since they are not the same, it'll actually skip it and not do anything. Now, another thing to note here is that we have this double equal sign on line five saying that, uh, and it will work in this case. But where we want to be careful, I'll go ahead and actually make another variable. Var my number equals five and var my number two equals five. But I'll put this other five in quotes. So what's happening here in this example is line four and five is demonstrating two different data types. So of course, line five is a string because we have that in quotes, but line four is a number. So now if I were to go to line seven and I were to make a conditional and I would check on my number and is it equal to my number two, then in that case, they would be equal. So I would say alert. same numbers. Okay, let me save that up. Now I'll go ahead and test this one. We'll test this in Firefox. And when it comes on up, it does say that they are the same numbers. Okay. So what you're almost always going to want to do is to have the three equal signs. And what the three equal signs does is it checks on the data type. It ensures that when we're checking on a condition, between two variables, for example, we only want it to work if the data types are the exact value. So it needs to be the exact value and the same data type. So now if I run this, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't get a result. And let me go ahead and refresh this. So now nothing happens, okay? Because they are not the exact data type. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out, come back here and replace this with comedy one and comedy two again, now that I've made that example. So in this case, it's not gonna matter terribly if you have the single quotes or the double quotes when we're comparing um, two strings, for example, but it's still a good habit to get into using the three over the two um, for the equal signs. Um, let me go ahead and do an uh, uh, else statement here. And most of the time, what we'll want to do is have another option. So if it doesn't meet this first condition on line five, then you usually don't just want a blank space. So then we'll have an else statement. And so in all other conditions, if it doesn't meet that condition on line five, then we want to do an alert. They are not the same. 
Okay, I go ahead and save this up and hit the refresh. And as we can see, they are not, they are not the same. Okay. Because it hits this first condition, it's not true, and then it goes down and it immediately skips to line 9 where, where it does the other option.